Good evening, my brothers and sisters. This is the bishop. I know I'm about 10 minutes late, so I'm gonna give y'all a chance to come on. Uh, I was out running errands, and since I was out running errands, I made a stop. Uh, y'all hold on now. Let me catch my little breath here. But we're going to look at 2 Timothy, chapter 3. Uh, let me bring it down a little bit. Let me see it. Yes, Lord, for the rest of my day. Yes, Lord, for the rest of my day. Yes, Lord. Yeah, I'm waiting on y'all to come on. Uh, and just as soon as you come on, we're going to go ahead and get started. Amen. We're going to just go ahead and get started. Amen. Amen. We're going to just go ahead and get started. Uh-huh, but you want to take it in that call? Let me take it Okay, hold on. Hey, Daddy, do you like that? Okay. Okay. Uh, again, my brother and sisters, good evening to you. Ooh. Yeah. And then it failed. <laughs> Somebody said that devil is a lie. Uh, again, my brother and sisters, Bishop C.R. Davis Jr., this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Good evening, Sister Davis. Uh, good evening, Sister Sherry. Uh, amen. Thank y'all for coming on. Like I said, I'm running a little behind. I'm running errors, but God is still, God and God is faithful, amen? So tonight we're going to talk from 2 Timothy chapter 3. And we talk, we're going to talk about difficult times for Christian service, amen? And, and godliness in the last days. And, and I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, I get ready to say this. I'm going to go ahead and pray, but... I don't know about you, it's just kind of difficult right about now with all the stuff that is going on uh, from stuff that just don't make no sense. It, it's just stupid stuff, but, you know, the Bible talks about uh, this kind of stuff going on in the last day. So as we look at this, let me read the Bible. Uh, chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 3, and beginning at verse 1. We're going to read, amen. Uh, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient uh, to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, un unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, uh, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God having a form of godliness but denying uh, its power have nothing to do with them father god we thank you right now in the name of jesus uh for blessing us this opportunity to share uh your word to uh with your people again god and then god i thank you for my life health and strength i know the breathing may be bad god but uh you still got me on this side of the living i thank you uh, for that so god i know that you're going to give me what I need to be able to do uh, what I need to do. So we praise and honor you uh, for being so worthy and so good to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mm. Hello, Brother Antonio. I miss you at church. Amen. So I'm talking about the difficult times for the believer. Amen. Because the believer may not believe it, but we are living in difficult times. Your faith is going to be tested beyond measure. I, I was just at a store uh, 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 a, a while ago uh, talking to the owner, and he said, you know, uh, I've been hearing a lot about FedNow.gov. Uh, and he said, man, it was just like you said months ago. I said, yeah, uh, the enemy tells us what he's going to do. But, hello, Sister Noon Evangelist. But we don't take heed. Uh, we act as though nothing is going to happen. 
The only thing we look at the word of God for is the fact that we're going to go to heaven. That's it. Uh, do what is right. Love your neighbor. Treat each other right. Love God. You know, all of that. And we are going to heaven. We, we, we don't look at all this other stuff that's going on. And even though God said it would be happening, here we are. And some of us still don't take it to heart. We, 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 we take it for granted as though uh, this too shall pass. No, it's not. It's part of prophecy. But as Apostle Paul uh, talks to his son in the ministry, Timothy, he, he, he advises him on people who not to deal with. He said, have nothing to do with them. That was the last thing I read. But the first thing he said, but mark this. Mark what? Paul's reference to the last day reveals his sense of urgency. The last days began after Jesus' resurre resurrection when the Holy Spirit came upon the believers at Pentecost. The last days will continue until Christ's second coming. This means that we are living in the last day. So we should make the most of the time that God has given us. Amen. We should make most of the time that God has given us. Amen. Uh, because it's getting ready to move into another atmosphere, as my apostolic brothers and sisters would say. It's moving into another atmosphere. And this atmosphere is going to be an atmosphere of distress, uh, famine. It's going to be a, a time where people uh, are going to have to struggle to get water. And, and even in the process of all of that that we see taking place, people are still trying to do their own thing. You know, they, they, and now everything has been has become about the individual. It's like I am God. I am everything about what God stands for is me. And I've often said I cannot agree with that because I did not create myself. And I believe that there was a power greater than me that created me in my mother's womb. Uh, matter of fact, he told Jeremiah, I knew you uh, when you was in your mother's womb. Amen? So we look at what Paul is telling Timothy here, that the last days are going to be lawless. And right now we see so many things going on. People driving down the street shooting each other. Hello, Sister Evangelist Taisha. Uh, people going down the road shooting uh, in the cars, amen, killing people. We see people trying to enjoy their lives at a, a, a public gathering, and some people come out with guns and start shooting everybody. Come on, church, what's really going on? God says it's the last days, amen? Amen. So as Paul is talking to Timothy, Timothy he, he gives us, and you know, Timothy, young Timothy was a half Greek and Hebrew, just like Paul. Amen. And so in the process, Paul is teaching him uh, how to uh, be, uh, basically take the reins. Uh, because Paul, when you get to chapter four, Paul begins to talk about uh, his departure. Uh, in I think in first Timothy chapter four, I believe it is, he talks about his departure. Amen. And, 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 and when he talks about his departure, Paul is letting Timothy know these are things that are going to take place. Amen? And so when we look at it, he gives the description of the kind of people that are in the world at the end time. Amen? And, and the kind of people are here are people that have become lovers of themselves. And, and, and what do you mean? Everything, they love themselves so much that nothing else matters. No one else matters. As long, and I know people not passing judgment, not doing any of that, but I, I happen to know people in my own family that way. It, it's all about them and nobody else matters. Amen? Nobody else matters but them. They wouldn't give you a drink of water if you wanted it, and they sure wouldn't give you a piece of food if you needed it. Amen? And when you talk about the word of God to them, they don't want to hear it. But I got news for them. That Apostle Paul, as he reveals what's going to take place 
amen, in our world today, uh, he says they should be lovers of themselves and lovers of money. It's all about money. Here money is destroying the body of Christ. Not the church, the body of Christ. Money has become the central thing of the disagreements and arguments in the church when you should understand that the money that you give uh, out of obedience into the establishment, it belongs to God and for his use. Amen? But people are now refusing to tithe, uh, knowing, but they'll come to church. They won't give an offering, but they'll come to church and they'll sit right there and hear a powerful message and they would take that message and they would apply it to them to their to their lives, amen. But they wouldn't do nothing for no one else. I, I think the old saying is, "I I got mine, you need to get yours," amen. But it says they be lovers of money, uh, boastful. I, I've never seen a group of people today uh, that are so boastful and proud and abusive, amen. You 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 can you, at, at, at the at the at the turn of your head, you went from joy to the world to the world and ended because all of a sudden you got folk that just want to act a fool, amen? But it's not that God would have us to be ignorant because he gave this word to Paul for Paul to tell us who to look for and who to know uh, that they are part of the satanic cult. That's who they are. They are part of that satanic cult. That's why Paul says, have nothing to do with them. They are they disobedient to their parents. I preached a message on yesterday, uh, on Sunday. Uh, how soon do we forget? And, and our children forget how many times people have been there for them and to do for them. But when it comes time for them to do, they disobedient to their parents. I'm not going to do that. I, I don't want to do that. But mom, dad, nobody ever said that to them. And then for family, family, oh, God help me here. Family are the same way. But I posted a post. I think it was um, uh, uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 36 or 37. It says, uh, a man's worst enemy is that of his own family. And this is what we're seeing. Family is turning against one another. They're not supportive. They're not helpful. You do what you got to do for you, and I do what I have to do for me. But the devil is a lie, amen? Because God has a, but it said disobedient, ungrateful. You know, you can buy something. You, you, you really don't. You really don't need them to say thank you, but that is the right thing to do. Say thank you. Today, you can buy someone something, food, drink, whatever, and before they say thank you, they just walk off. And you say, whoa, you you ungrateful rascal? Uh, uh, you can't say thank you? And then they go, I didn't ask you to buy it, no way. So why should I say thank you if I didn't ask you to buy it? This, this, this is their go-to word, I didn't ask you. But I did it because I saw a need, amen? But these are the kind of people you have. They're ungrateful. They're unholy. You got so many people, they holler about, how shall I thank you, God? I, I thank you, God, for saving me, sanctifying me, filling you, me with your precious Holy Ghost, and that would fire and, and walk right out the church after they made that declaration and walk right back out the church and go to acting the same way they were before they got to church, and it wasn't holy. They were acting unholy because today, the, the saints cuss each other out just as fast, amen. Guilty, doesn't use some words myself. Amen. I ain't gonna, I take my own inventory and I share. Not taking yours, but have lost the tongue. And we know the tongue is like deadly poison. Amen. But we let it slip and we let it go. Amen. But but not today. Somebody said that devil is a lie. So Paul said they're unholy. What is unholy? Unrighteous. They're unrighteous. And you know, I I was sharing with somebody a while ago. I said, man, let me tell you something. These folk need to wake up as much as other people have done for them. And then now they think they have arrived, amen, because it's not them that they don't want to help, amen. But you know what? This rock, when it rose, it rose both ways, amen. 
I may be down today and you up today. Tomorrow I may be up and you down. Well, guess what? I'm not going to put you down. I'm going to try to help you up. That's because that's the love of God. I was thinking about a message uh, about the love of God. God. Jesus said, men will know that you're my disciples by the love that you have for one another. But we live in a loveless society. And then what gets me? We howl about who we are and how much wrong that people have done to us. But we're doing the wrong now. And I'm not talking about the killing of one another. I'm talking about everything that has happened since 2019. Who helped to destroy these cities? And matter of fact, who paid them to do it? And then why would they want to do it? It's because they say America is racist. America is this. But if America was as bad as you say, uh, I, I don't know about you here. I go there, my hand. Uh, most of us are welfare recipients. Uh, I remember the, 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 the before the food stamp, we would go out on Harry High and pick up commodities, the welfare spam, the welfare chicken in the can, the welfare cheese, uh, the welfare powder milk, the government stuff, I'm saying, and we would go pick it up. Then they moved the food stamp. So now you think you've arrived and you don't need those, but you're still sitting around waiting for your EBT card to be filled. Amen. So you allow yourself to be degraded, uh, to you allow yourself uh, to uh, 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 do or uh, go against uh, the art of God, amen, uh, to go along with the wrong for the money, amen. He says, slanderous, so they are without self control, they, they, they just do what they want to do and how they want to do it, conceited, treacherous. Not lovers of good. Uh, they love pleasure rather than God. And I know I've been here before, but but I'm like Peter now. Uh, there's a need for me to write it and to, to say it to you again because you need to remember. And then it says having a form of godliness. Listen, you got so many people out here, even preachers. See, my crazy self, I said crazy, my crazy self, I believe the book. It's like when it comes to people that are sick. I believe what James said in chapter 5 when he says, If any sick among you, let him send for the elders of the church who will come and anoint you with all and lay hands on you and pray the prayer of faith and you shall recover. And a few verses later he said, The fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. But you got these folk with the long robes as Jesus talked about in Matthew 23 when he told the disciples and the others, do as they say do, but don't do as they do because they don't practice what they preach. They like to, they like to put the weight up on you and tell you what you supposed to do. But a true shepherd, the one that has a shepherd's heart, you're not going to do no more than that person do. And I said to a member today, I said a lot of times people get it mixed up. They think that it's one way when it's not. I told them, not only am I the pastor of the church, I am a member. And what I do and how I spend my money to help beautify the church, the, the building, so that the body can come in and be comfortable and can sit back and enjoy the word uh, and look at how God is doing their establishment, uh, how soon do we forget it's about God. Ministry is about God. But you have those that hold, have a form of godliness. Yes, that's what it says. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power. The form or appearance of godliness includes going to church. You got so many people come to church out of tradition, not coming to church to be transformed. That's why they come in bitter, they leave bitter and they come back bitter because they don't want to hear the word that would help change them from being bitter to being, amen a godly person you don't believe me? A lot of times people talk to me and I say to them, well you know the Bible said or you know Paul said and I start quoting scripture they don't want to hear that they want to hear your opinion they want to hear your thoughts. Well, the only thoughts I have for you, because my thoughts, or just like your thoughts, may lead both of us down that rabbit hole, headed toward hell. So what I want you to understand, if I'm quoting scripture, you better take that and eat that. Amen? You better take that and eat that. So he says, having a form 
of godliness, and it says, what is it? The form or appearance of godliness includes going to church, knowing Christian doctrine, using Christian cliches, and following a community uh, Christian traditions. Amen. He says such practice can make a person look good. And I told you, I heard the bishop on, um, mm, help me the Holy Ghost. I didn't forget what the movie was. But I heard the bishop said, we ought to spend less time trying to look good. You know, we'll spend a lot of money on our hair, our must. You know, we'll spend a lot of money on that. So when we come up in uh, the church, we be dripping, we be fleek or whatever all these new words these people have. We, we, we walk through the door like, mm, look at me. But that's not godliness. Because my Savior, he was wounded for our chastisement. I just, I, 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 I was on him. I mean, he went through everything. That was nothing uh, glamorous about what he did. Somebody has fooled us to believe that being a believer, a Christian, that it's, it, it's smooth sailing. No, there is what we call service, and then there's called sacrifice, you know, and that goes along with your salvation. Amen? It goes along with your salvation. Then he says, amen, is that such practices can make a person look good, but if the inner attitudes of belief, love, and worship are lacking, the outer appearance is meaningless. See, the inner person, the inner man, is what needs to be good. That spirit needs to be right. But instead, amen, hello, Minister Smith, in, in, instead, that, that inner man is just as rotten as that outer man. And we want to walk around as though we are there, but we are far from it. I've never seen so many Christians think it's all right to go get drunk, think it's all right to have four or five girlfriends or boyfriends, or think it's all right to steal, lie, cheat, whatever it is. And it's okay because when I go to God, I just say, God, forgive me in the name of Jesus, baby. Don't play games with God because you may not get that chance. I shared this story with a brother yesterday. When I got shot, it wasn't about, Lord, save me. Lord, uh, 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 I believe in Jesus. It wasn't none of that. I did say, Lord, I don't want to die. I said that, but I didn't ask him forgiveness. I didn't ask nothing. I was, I was so concerned about getting even that I couldn't, I couldn't even muster up a Lord forgive me of my sins. I was so angry and bitter, all I could think about was doing harm. Amen? So if the outer appearance is not, you know, the inside ain't right, the outer appearance is meaningless. Paul warns us not to be deceived by people who only appear to be a believer. And it may be difficult to distinguish them from true believers at first, but their daily behavior will, will give them away. The characteristics, yes sir, described in these verses are unmistakable, and we see them every day, amen? I tell people, if you've been around me, I'm one dude, don't change. Been the same way for the last 30 years. Been the same way. And when I say the same way, my belief, my faith in God is unwavering. My faith, my belief in God and his word is unwavering. I study a whole lot of different books. I study a whole lot of different religions. But yet, my faith and my belief in God and in the Bible is unwavering. I stand firm on what I believe that's in this book. And I quote this book regularly. Amen? So, he says... They have a form, but denying the power. Pastor, a friend of mine said, what if the power will go? I said, well, let me, let me help you out. The power ain't going nowhere. It's the individual. What do you mean? Well, see, because we are in certain cliques, denominations, and so forth, there are certain things we don't do in certain denominations. One of them is laying on his hand. One of them is speaking in tongues. 
one of them is using all. I remember one time a young man uh, 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 was in the church and he saw some all on my podium. And he grabbed his wife by the head and said, it's time to get out of here because this ain't, this ain't what we believe. They believe all can save you. No, I don't believe all can save you. All is symbolic, just like everything else in the Bible. And it was used for a reason. Amen? And, and, and the Bible said that they lay, they will anoint you and lay hands on you. Amen? Now, look what he says. Amen? And he says five. He said have the power. Amen? So, we understand they have the appearance of. But now let me say this here to you. Paul says, have nothing to do with them. And if the Bible is telling us to have nothing to do with them, why are we breaking our necks trying to embrace them? You think that you're doing the work of an evangelist? No. You're putting yourself in jeopardy. Young man told me the other day, said, Pastor, don't put yourself in an uncompromising situation. And he was right. I felt funny where I was sitting. But it didn't take me long to get up, amen, and to move around. Because, see, sometimes people won't let your past go. Remember he said right there, he says unforgiving. They don't have love. They're unforgiving. <clears throat> They're unforgiving. They say, I forgive you, but then they go and scandalize your name. They say, I forgive you, and they go and talk about you like a dog, amen? But that's not godly, amen? That's not the way God intended for us as his children to be. And I've never seen this, that there's so much ratchetness in the body of Christ. Well, Pastor, how, how can you say that when you know we all came from something? Yes, we did. And that's the deal. We came from somewhere doing something and God saved us. We always holler, uh, uh, I found the Lord. No, you didn't. The Holy Ghost found you. And salvation was given to you, amen. Uh, if you don't believe me, Romans uh, 5 and 8, God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Salvation was presented to you, and some of us re refuse that because we don't want to be delivered. We like the hell hole we living in. We enjoy the life that we have. And then when things don't go right, here we come crying. Well, guess what? Let me finish what I'm saying. I'm going to move right on. He said, have nothing to do with them. We ain't got, we do not have any business other than sharing the word of God with the unbeliever. We have no business sitting down, hanging out with them. You don't believe me? Let me go over here right quick. Let me read this scripture for you. If you don't believe me, let me go over here uh, and find this particular scripture because I want you to listen to this. If you think that we're supposed to hang out with them, let's see what the Bible says about that. Hello. Can, can we see what the Bible says about that? Uh, Psalms 1. What does it say? Uh, Psalms 1. Oh, my goodness. Where is it? Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. In other words, I don't take advice from the wicked, but you got so many believers that do. You'll listen to a wicked man or woman, knowing they're not in the body of Christ. You sitting there, they same sex married. You and you sitting right there smiling and knowing that goes against God's word, knowing it goes against. And you sit there and you entertain it and you smile. You just guilty as they are. Amen. He says, "Who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners?" You know, you got a lot of folk won't come to church because of believers. I've heard one say, if, 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 if the rest of your members is like that one, I won't come to your church. First of all, it's not my church. Jesus said up on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It is the Lord's church. I am just like you. I am a servant of the Lord. He just gave me a leadership credential and he gave you a following credential, hoping that you would grow up and become a leader to lead others to him. That's why he said, after you receive the Holy Ghost, you shall receive, watch well, his power. You see? So that you can go and testify a witness of me all over the world. But once we get ours, we done, sisters and brothers, brothers and sisters. 
He said, nor stand in the way of sinners. And then he says, or sit in the seat of Marcus. We sit up and listen to other people make fun of brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. We sit up and listen to their joke about our Lord and Savior. We sit up and, and laugh at their jokes about uh, 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 what we believe. And I don't see how you can believe that. You don't want to go to work every day. You don't want to make that money. But then when you tell them, say, I understand what you're saying, but if it was not for the Lord on my side, I wouldn't wake up this morning. Because you know what? Death sits at my door every day. And death waits for the opportunity to come in and usher me out. But thank God that he's able to keep me even in my sleep when the devil and his angels are roaming trying to see uh, who they can get and take over. My brothers and sisters, listen to me. I'm going to say this and you better hear me. Because when Jesus was getting ready to do his departure, he was telling the brethren uh, what not to do. And see, right now we got so much going on in this world. Young people don't believe in God no more. Uh, old people have lost their faith uh, because of what's going on in this world. You, you, you sit and you look and you listen on the news. You sit and you listen to your radio. You follow every podcast that's done, true news, uh, uh, whatever, and you hear all of this discontent. You hear all of this hate, and you hear all of this supposedly conspiracy. You listen to all of this. You find yourself stretched out. You find yourself full of anxiety You because there is nowhere to go. We stuck inside of this firmament right along with the enemy that's in this firmament. And me and Deacon was talking the other day, and I said, Deacon, and why don't mess with text? You ask me what I'm doing, I'm going to call you because agorism and Satan is the prince of this air. You wonder why there is confusion in the body? We have embraced everything that the devil has offered, but we will not embrace what the Lord offers, and that is salvation at the end of your life. We won't pick up our Bible. We sit and wait for somebody else to read it to us, to tell us what it said, when all you got to do is pick it up and read it just like everybody else. Amen? Now, let me finish what I'm saying. So, here we are now, living in a time they talk about 2023. They talk about 2025. Agenda 2021. Now they went up to Agenda 2030. And by 2030, all currency should be gone. Everything should be dealt with by uh, uh, electronics. Uh, and, and people say it would be better because you can't get robbed. It'll be better. But you fail to realize you're constantly giving away your freedom. But one thing I love about it, that no matter what's going on in this world, as long as I stand with the Lord, I don't have to worry about it. Because if I die in the Lord, that's game for me. But now if I die outside of the will of God, I'm lost and on my way to hell. I have to stay within the will of God. And I don't have, I cannot and will not allow others to dictate to me what we should be doing. Amen? So this is what I say to you, as Jesus said to, to his disciples. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care how desperate it looks. Be like the disciples, even though Jesus was with them and they wanted him to stay. But when you look at what Jesus said to them in John 14, when he got ready to go, he said, let not your heart be troubled. In other words, don't you stress. Don't you fret. Don't you give up. He says, do not let your heart be troubled. He said, trust in God. Trust is something hard for us to deal with. But when you understand trust, it's like believing something happens even though you were there not there to see it. It's like we trust uh, the word to tell us that we have a savior. The word tells us what we have to do to obtain this savior. And so if I have obtained this savior, 
and he tells me to trust in God. And he says, trust all so in me. He talked to the disciples, but we are his disciples now in, the, in this season, in this time. We are the fishermen of the world. We are the ones that are supposed to go and cast our nets on the other side. We are the one that is supposed to be out a sound in the alarm. The end is coming. The end is coming. Jesus is on his way back. We need to get, you need to get your house in order. He says, trust also in me. Because here I don't understand. We all want to go to heaven. We all want to be in that mansion. But we don't want to do what's right to get there. We just think he's supposed to lay down and give it to us. No, it don't do that. It doesn't work that way. He says, in my father's house, a many mansion. If it were not so, I would not have told you. Then what got me, after he advised them on that, he turns and say, and I go. Somebody say go. He says, and I go. I am going there. Where? To my father's house. To prepare a place for you. Boy, what a mighty Jesus we serve. Amen? He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. But the only way you can get there is that you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. You believe that he was nailed to that cross, hands and feet, nailed to that cross, cursed as any man hung on a tree. He took the sins of the world, your sin, my sin, and they were nailed to him while he was on that cross. And you know what, unlike a lot of us brothers and sisters, he never said a mumbling word. He was like Job. He never cursed God and blamed God for nothing. Amen. So listen to me. Jesus willfully, there is no greater love than this, that a man would lay down his life for a friend. And Jesus called us friends. And he says, I go to prepare a place for you. In other words, you still ain't doing everything that should be required of you. Jesus is still doing it. Even from heaven, he's still doing it. Even from when he went in the grave, he was still doing it. Even way back when he did it, he's still doing it today. And so my brother and sister, I need you to understand that here Christ is up there uh, preparing a place for you. Now one writer says that your brother, uh, the devil, the adversary, so he's going in there and he's railing accusations against you. He is accuser of the brethren and he's still accusing us today. And while he's accused, the reason why he's accusing us because he's jealous of us. Satan don't attack us, don't attack us for no reason. He attacks us because he's jealous, because he's an angel and he was put in charge, oh, watch this now, to watch over us. And he didn't want to do that. So he rebelled, kind of like a lot of y'all. Long as you go to church and the pastor give you a word which you don't know what he said afterward, because he'll come back and say, what did you hear today? Uh, I'm going to be honest. I, I heard you, pastor, but I, I really did. How can you sit in a house so loud that they can hear the music and the preaching two blocks away? and not hear nothing. You got to be deaf. Hello, Sister uh, Paul, you got to be deaf, amen? But not only is he preparing and interceding for us while he's there preparing, he's interceding for us. He's letting it be known that when we come and confess our sins to God, who is just to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness, amen? Jesus is preparing a place for us. And then he tells us, you ain't even got to worry about getting a ticket because I'm going to come back. He said, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. And he said, you know the way to the place where I'm going. People talk about Thomas all the time, call him Don Thomas. But Thomas was a Hebrew. Thomas was concrete. You can tell me what you want to tell me, but I got to see it for myself. That wasn't nothing about doubt. I got to see it for myself. If I had never experienced 
The word, listen, according to what this word has put into my spirit and into my heart, if I had never gone into coming to Christ, full gospel church, Italy, Texas, under the leadership of Pastor Virgil Stevenson, I wouldn't have this word in me today. Faith come by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. And that woman preached the word of God till she scared the hell out of me. And I gave my life to Christ. So did. Now, I backslid down the road, but I paid a, a serious price for it. I paid a serious price. I ended up getting shot, sent to prison twice. That's called disobedient. That's called being chastised for my disobedience. It was prophesied to me who I would be today, but I didn't want to hear that. I wanted to do what I wanted to do. And as a result, God allowed me. But we sang that song, Trouble in My Way. I had to cry sometimes. I cried a lot of tears, but I'm like Thomas now. I had to see it for myself. And when that woman told me, when pastor told me some stuff, I sat and I began to investigate and watch. This woman told me stuff over 30 years ago and I see it taking place right now. She preached a message. She said one day they're going to gather up all the money and put it in the street and set it afire. What are they doing with it now? Going in stores, you don't get no, you can't even use money in certain places. You got to have a card which is leaning toward the mark of the beast. Amen? But Thomas, when he said, he said, so, he said, uh, verse 4, it said, you know the way where I'm going. John 14, 5, 4. Thomas said, this is what he said. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Look what Jesus said for all those argumentative people that wants to believe that there are uh, uh, other ways to get there. Yeah, we had other messengers before. We had others before. But this one declared to be the only begotten of the Father, the Son of God. And this one said, Jesus, he says, I am the truth and the way. He said, I am the way and the truth and life. Listen, and the life. No one comes to no one comes to the Father unless he comes through by me. And my brothers and sisters, Jesus is the door. We have to come to Jesus to be able to enter in the kingdom. But while we're coming to Jesus and those of us that are already there, Paul lets Timothy know and us know that there is some ratchetness in the world. That the world is now going to hell in a handbasket. What do you mean, pastor? Well, you look around, I've never, in my 65 years, and I had a best friend, uh, Miss Chris. His name was Charles, but they call him Miss Chris. Had some of the longest, pretty, natural hair you ever wanted to see. But at the end of the day, he was still a man. At the end of the day, he was still a man. I don't care if you cut it off, you're still a man. I don't care if you sew it up and sew on, you still a woman. So we got to tell the devil, get thee behind me, Satan. It's time for the body of Christ to rise up and let the world know we ain't nobody to play with. I looked at some documentaries about Rome and how they end up getting where they were because the Christians rose up and fought against them. We sitting back now allowing any and everything to go on taking our money, raising gas prices, raising food prices, got us eating fake food, printed food, food, horses and dogs and humans, got all kind of stuff going on today. And we just going right along with it. Saying, boom, what's that word? Come and get us, Lord. No, you got to endure. Because you haven't endured anything yet. You haven't gone through anything yet. What you've gone through, the Bible says, coming to man. You hear me? What you've gone through already is coming to man. But baby, that's coming a day like that time of Noah. And then that's coming a time, amen, like that day of Sodom and Gomorrah. 
we finding out now that we got a whole lot of in the closet folk that want to come out. And I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to keep it moving. Uh, we got so many, and I don't understand what Bible they are reading because you got same sex, man and man, married, talking about, that's my husband. And he's a pastor of a traditional Baptist church. Come on, church. Really? Even the Baptists don't believe that. Well, you know that's them, pastor. They, 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 they do what they want. No! Don't you know that words are spirit and they're life and you let that homosexual stand there and preach to you? You might turn around and start talking, oh, I need me a husband like that if it make him like that. Hello? No. Women in a pulpit married to another woman. Tell me that's my wife. Oh, no. The Bible said a man, a man, a man. Get mad if you want to. I don't care. He says a man who finds a woman finds a good thing. I know it said wife, but when you go translate the word wife, it means woman. A man who finds a woman finds a good thing. Matter of fact, the Bible said in the beginning, God created man and woman. God created him male and female. God created them and told them to be fruitful and multiply. Two men can't multiply nothing but some mess. Two women can't do nothing but shed some mess. Hello, somebody. So Y'all got to get this thing together. If you truly in the body of Christ, you need to stand up and act like it. Call sin what it is. Sin, and don't be afraid of it. One of my ministers on Sunday, she stood up and I didn't say a word. Wasn't just say a word. She said that God said that we ain't supposed to be shacking. Uh-huh. See, some preachers say, that wasn't for her to say. Heck, I didn't say it. The Holy Ghost gave it to her. And they received it from her. And they're going to correct. Amen? So my brothers and sisters, as I go to the end of this, I don't want you to lose heart. I want you to prepare yourself. If the devil tells you you need to get water for three months, you better go buy enough water to last you a year if you can afford it. He tells you you need enough food for three months, you go get however much food you can get for six months to a year. Because this ain't going to just blow over like they say it is. No, 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 no. This is going to head down the road, y'all. It's going to head on down the road until we finally get to see a nuclear holocaust. And when that time come, ain't no use of running, ain't no use of hiding, because the rocks, you gonna be hollering rocks, fall on me, and the rocks gonna be crying, trying to run. So my brother and sister, you better, you better get on your bending knees. You better take what you've confessed for the last 40 years, and you better make a a, a, a seal of it and tell the Lord for real Lord for you I live and for you I die God I cannot take a chance on going to hell today people don't even believe hell is real anymore but let me say this and I'm going to leave it alone I said that a while ago but I'm going to go ahead and hit this right here the Bible says in uh, 21 Amen. Verse 8 of Revelation. 21 and verse 8 of Revelation. He said, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, uh, the sexual immoral, those who practice, practice magic arts, the idolaters, those who like to worship picture, people, places, and things, and all liars, uh, Y'all know the coward and unbeliever, the vile, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the sexual immoral, those who commit adultery and the vile is homosexuality. He says, and all liars, he says, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning suffer. In other words, the King James said they should be in a fiery place. And it says, 
is hell. This is the second death. See, people don't realize we're going to die more than once. See, it's appointed a man once to die. Then comes the second death. And after the second one, it's about the judgment. So you better get your house in order. You better stop playing games with yourself. Stop playing games with your salvation. Stop playing games with your soul. And get right with God. I think I heard somebody say, get right, church. And let's go home. Ha <laughs> ha! Get right, church. And let's go home. Because that day is coming and it's coming fast. We got to be ready when the Lord comes. Don't be like the ten virgins. Five had what they needed and five didn't. Don't get caught with no oil. Don't just get caught with a Bible under your arm, but the Bible ain't even in your heart. I hear so many people talk about the Bible, but their life proves that the Bible is not in their heart. The Word got to be in you, because once the Word gets in you, the love will come out. And Jesus said that men would know that you are my disciples by the love that you show toward one another. Amen? Amen. We thank God for tonight. I thank God for all of you who came out to see and to hear godliness in the last day. We see it all around us. Why you kill that man? Why? Because he shot you a finger. You shot through the window car and took a, a mother from her children. Lawless. People out trying to have fun. It's hot outside. They out trying to have fun and you stand out there in your black with your AK-47 and you start shooting. You come into church with your trench coat on, with your shotgun up under your trench coat and you start shooting folk in the church. This is where we live. This is the time in which we live. My brother and sister, let me tell you something. The Bible tells us that we are to be watchful and that we always need to be looking because I believe it's First Tim, First Peter, uh, amen. I think First Peter chapter five, I believe it is. You know I'm flipping pages, y'all. Uh, he tells us uh, in chapter five, Let's look what he says. Verse 6. 1 Peter 5 and 6. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Mm -hmm. Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Stop trying to lift yourself up. Humble yourself. God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. He says that he may lift you up in due time. So in the process, he's to cast all your anxiety. And I'm thinking now that anxiety and stress is what's calling, causing my reaction uh, to this shortness of breath and to the losing of breath. But he says, cast, throw all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Amen? Throw it on him. And then he tells us, be self-controlled. <coughs> be self-controlled. Let me say that again. Be self-controlled and alert. See, people say, hey, Reb, you just want to say, no. Sin <clears throat> is not something done accidentally. Sin is something done willingly because we have to consider once the thought gets there, I start working with that thought. Do you want to fall short of God's glory or do you want to receive God's gift of eternal life? I want to receive that gift. So there are times, I ain't going to lie, I would not lie to you and say that I make it all the time, but I can put a percentage on it, 95, 96, 97, 
percent, percent of the time I make it because I make a conscious decision that I'm not going out like that, not today, and I live one day at a time. I don't live for tomorrow, I live for one day at a time. My tomorrow has not come, but I know that one day when it does come, and my Lord shall appear in the air, amen, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those of us that are alive and still remain shall be caught up with them to meet him in the air. Then, that's my tomorrow. Hallelujah, that's mine, amen? So he says, be self-controlled and alert. You gotta pay attention. Some of y'all drive down the road like this. I pull up on the side of some folk, blow up my horn, they like this. Ain't look no way like this. And you wonder why you always running in the wrecks. You wonder why you always having a wreck. Because you ain't paying attention. Hallelujah, thank you Jesus. You're not alert. Uh, did you see, here's an example, I ain't, ain't gonna tell you who it was. I went to a place one day, and I walked behind some people so close I could touch them. I even had a conversation with the police. They didn't hear my voice. They never once turned around to notice. I even parked directly behind them. <laughs> and then when they came out, I came out behind them. They go, oh, there you are. When you get, I've been here the whole time. Be alert. Why should I be alert? Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He says, resist him, standing firm in the faith because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. Hallelujah. Lions attack sick, young, and straggling animals. They choose, amen, victims who are alone or not alert. Peter warns us to watch out for Satan when we are suffering and being persecuted. Feeling, watch this here now, feeling alone, weak, helpless, and cut off from other believers so focused on our troubles that we forget to watch for danger. For danger. We are especially vulnerable to Satan's attack during times of suffering. Seek other Christians for support. Keep your eyes on Christ. Well, Pastor, I call my brothers and sisters and they don't answer the phone. Leave a message and hopefully call you back. Or change your prayer partners change the people that you talk to and find them that would answer the phone. I don't want to talk to nobody that's going to text me and tell me they praying for me. I need to hear your voice. I don't want to talk to nobody that's going to text me and try to have a conversation with me because those algorithms, 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 whatever they are, they will mess you up. Well, how they texting my stuff? Here you go. I'm going to tell you. When we buy these new phones, and we boot them up. First thing it says, I need access to your location. I need access to your camera. I need access to your microphone. And we'll be sending texts sometime uh, on your behalf. Now, you say no, the phone won't come on. You say yes, you got everything the phone is designed to do. And I ain't gonna lie to you, I got a new friend. His name is Chat. <laughs> That's my AI I talk to, Google she tripping. So I'm going to let her alone. But anyway, we thank God for you tonight. And we pray that something was said that will help you as we see the dark days approaching. I pray, my brothers and sisters, that you take heed to the words that were spoken. And you begin to prepare yourself. As I said earlier, my pastor told us years ago. She said, son... Uh, these people wants control. And they're going to do any and everything they can. How do you get an individual to believe that he's sick when you know he's healthy? You begin to put something in him. You begin to put some type of mind altering something. You know. So that he or she would think the opposite 
of what God said. And God said that we are man, woman. And now I heard somebody say as I get ready to go, it's my third time. Uh, I heard somebody say, it's not your genitals that define who you are. It's who you are in your heart. And I want to say to them, I can't say what I want to say, but I will say you're a lie. Genitals determine who you are. I'm a man. I possess. Yes. My wife is a woman. She possess. Yes. I cannot produce children, but she could. Amen. I am a man. I yes. I don't. I don't birth them in the world. I just carry the seed and I transfer, and the woman produces. Two men again can't. Two women can't unless you go get a man to do so. And a man that will go to give up his sperm for any amount of money to put a child, an innocent child, in a house with homosexuals is just as bad as the devil himself. Y'all be blessed. I am the bishop, C.R. Davis, New Caledonia Baptist Church, Rockwall, Texas. You need to come see me sometime because we keep it real and we stay true. So I want to pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for your written word. We thank you for those who you chose to record this word <clears throat> so that those today, such as myself, would have this word to help me to be able to stand firm and to hold on to your unchanging hand. God, there are some out there tonight on the sound of my voice. Uh, they're dealing with sickness, disease. They're dealing with anxiety, stress. God, it's just so much going on that even the believer is starting to doubt himself. So God, I want you to restore unto him, as David said, my salvation. Restore unto him or her their salvation, their deliverance, to let them know that you're still God <clears throat> and that you love them, that you care for them, because if it was not so, you never would have sent your son, as John the Revelator said in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Hold firm. Give them the power, the strength. Fill them with a fresh uh, anointing of the Holy Ghost. Fill them, God, so that when they grab hold now, they grab with a death grip, God, knowing that if they let go, that that's the end of it all. But let them hold on to your unchanging hand. Father, we ask that you bless them spiritually, mentally, and physically. Bless them in a mighty way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Y'all take care. Be blessed. Sorry I was late, uh, but I had to take care of something, so I did it. Now I'm still here. So y'all keep praying for me. I am Bishop C.R. Davis Jr., pastor of New Caledonia Baptist Church. Proud pastor, you hear me? Yeah. New Caledonia Baptist Church. The church on that rock. Rock wall test. Y'all be blessed till we meet again.